Hey there, innovators and investors, today in the Tediverse podcast hosted by NF10. We're diving into the digital deep end and digital compass, navigating the transformative world of blockchain and real estate, and our guest today is Jess Kanak. Welcome, and here we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the third episode of Today in the Tediverse with NF Ted from the NF Ted Studio in the Tediverse. And today, uh, we're going to have Jesse come out, our regular recurring guest, in just a moment. But before we bring him out, I have a little joke that I would like to drop on you guys, and it has to do with some of the current events. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about uh, the most recent NAR um, class action lawsuit settlement that happened yesterday. Uh, we're also going to be talking about a uh, trip I just got back from to San Diego with Real Broker and the Real Rise Summit, which is the second uh, Real Broker convention uh, that we had in San Diego. And uh, lastly, I'll talk about the uh, the uh, Proppy a AI and Web3 Summit um, that's going on in Miami Beach on Friday and what all is going on there. Uh, but uh, uh, so the National Association of Realtors just got a reality check from the courts. It's like someone finally told the emperor he's not wearing any clothes and all of us are like, Thank goodness, because that was an awkward open house. <laughs> but really, the NAR getting a verdict like this is like your GPS suddenly saying, recalculating after you've been driving in circles for the last decade. And you're in the back seat thinking, I could have sworn my dream home was just around the corner next to that coffee shop in the dog park. And the judge is like that friend who points out that you've been playing Monopoly wrong all these years. You just can't make up the rules, Steve. No, you can't collect rent while you're in jail. And no, you can't have a monopoly on the housing market. Now, they say the housing market might become more competitive. Great, because that's what we need, more competition, right? It's not enough that I'm out here bidding on a house against a guy who made his fortune selling rare memes as NFTs. But hey, at least now we know we're playing by the same rules. And by same rules... I mean, we all get to pass go, we all get to collect 200, and we all get outbid by a 19-year-old TikTok star who thinks mortgage is just a trendy way to say more garage. But I'm fine. All right, let's go have a seat. All right, everybody. Well, I'd like to welcome Jesse Canuck once again, and uh, here we go. Come on out, Jesse. Hey, Ted. Good to be here. How's everybody doing today? Good looking crowd. Hey. Right. Well, welcome back. I uh, hope you've had a great uh, few days since our last one of these and uh, uh, and looking forward to hearing, uh, you know, about some of the stuff that you have for us today. Um, why don't we start by discussing the recent settlement of the National Association of Realtors, since that is on everybody's mind right now, um, at least the people uh, that I am in contact with all the time. And so in, in case uh, people are not aware, uh, the name of the case is Burnett versus the NARAL. And uh, after an 11-day trial in Missouri uh, and after three hours of deliberation, the National Association of Realtors was found liable in the case, which had to do with uh, how the buyer's agent compensation is set up. Um, and as a result, the NAR was, was uh, found liable for $1.7 billion. And in this particular case, it's treble damages. So that makes the settlement to be over $5 billion. Now, that is a huge amount of money, and uh, it will most definitely be appealed and, and kept in the courts as long as possible to uh, avoid having it imposed because nobody likes to write a $5 billion check. 
deck uh, for a settlement. Uh, but uh, as it so happens, the attorney uh, who represented the plaintiffs, uh, as soon as the verdict was issued, went ahead and filed a second class action lawsuit for $40 billion. And so we're going to talk about the ramifications of these settlements and uh, and how the, the business is going to change moving forward. Um, a lot of people, um, uh, a, a lot of brokers are of the opinion that there's nothing we can do about it and keep doing business as usual. But personally, I think this is the first domino to fall and will fundamentally change our business because um, when the new, uh, as the new procedures are rolled out and you'll see uh, all the brokerages having meetings with all their agents about uh, how to talk about these class action lawsuits, uh, as well as uh, implementing a requirement for a buyer brokerage agreement, which is a new form and disclosure that talks about the relationship uh, of the buyer's agent to the buyer and the other parties in the transaction. And it spells out how the buyer's agent gets compensated. And up until this point, uh, the, the, that has been the commission that has been negotiated by the listing agent has been shared and most of the time split e equally between the buyer's agent. And, and so, Technically speaking, the listing agent would be sharing the, the listing agent's commission with the buyer's agent, but the way that it's been written and, and implemented over the years, uh, that has disgruntled a number of sellers who have obviously successfully uh, felt like the system was set up so that they, the seller, are paying the agent for the buyer. And uh, on, on top of that as well, uh, another sort of side note about this whole situation uh, is that the plaintiffs have felt like the NAR has uh, set up the system uh, in an uncompetitive way and that agents make far too much money. And so that is going to be a big point of contention as vast majority of agents do not make all that much money. And as a matter of fact, as I was talking with this, talking about this earlier, uh, a big part of why the consumers have that perception is, in my opinion, from the reality shows you see on TV, Million Dollar Listing, and they actually named selling uh, Sunset uh, on the, on, in the settlement uh, as portraying the lifestyle and amount of money that real estate agents, in quotes, make when, you know, these agents on those TV shows are, you know, uh, literally a handful of agents out of tens of thousands of agents in every market. So uh, basically what's going to happen moving forward, as I said, is the um, uh, the buyer's agent is going to have to have a presentation with all their clients and explain uh, what's going on with these class action lawsuits and the buyer broker agreement and how they're going to be compensated. Now, this will absolutely um, adversely affect uh, some buyers who uh, either won't be willing to or can't or, or are unable to pay the commission that the buyer's agent is requesting uh, to be part of the transaction. So um, that will have a couple of uh, different effects, one of which um, it will likely cut out the buyer's agent. And at the same time, the, uh, the potential buyer will end up uh, going directly to the listing agent who already represents the seller, and that may end up uh, creating a feeling of unfairness uh, going into that transaction. So um, that this is there, 
it's way too early to tell how all this stuff is going to shake out. But as I said, the uh, this is the first domino to fall. And I personally do not see how the NAR, the National Association of Realtors, is going to be able to survive a second one, especially if it's in the amount of $40 billion and treble damages. I mean, to, in my opinion, that's going to bankrupt the National Association of Realtors. So uh, fun times ahead for some and less for others. But uh, this is a very important topic for us to talk about. I will post in the comments section uh, an article about the settlement in case anybody wants to read it. And so um, what do you think about all this fun stuff, Jesse? Wow. Well, first, Ted, it's always a pleasure to be on the show. Thanks for having me back. And our, that's our some pleasure. pretty interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it, that's some pretty interesting stuff because I kind of get uh, to look over the fence from being Canadian, right? Looking from the north and, and uh, living in Mexico. I get to from the south. Um, what do I think about it? Wow. Complicated thing. Um, I think this might bring more business to Mexico. What do you think, Ted? That's uh, that's a pretty interesting uh, point. You know, I was going to ask you, you know, uh, how the uh, system is set up in Mexico with respect to uh, buyers' agents and their compensation, and and is it similar to what's going on up here in the United States, or do buyers uh, down there pay their buyers' agents? To represent them how's it done in mexico great question well it probably sounds familiar but basically if a buyer bring uh, a buyer's agent brings in a buyer it's split 50 50 right uh, that's a pretty normal thing and uh yeah you don't really have to deal with uh anything other than that it's kind of like a common rule that everybody knows like if uh two agents are working on this the commission's going to split 50 50 or if an agent's bringing in uh, a buyer to a master broker, then usually the master broker will make uh, a percentage and then the, the agent that brought the buyer in will make the majority of the commission that way. So it's, uh, I guess it's been set up pretty good that way and it's been like that for years and nobody's had any interest to change it because it seems to be working, right? Like even if, uh, let's say like, in a weird circumstance, like three agents came in, obviously the agents would have to make their agreement and then that's the way that it rolls out, right? Does that make sense? Um, yeah, it makes sense to me. It's, uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of other people were, uh, you know, were interested to hear how the, the whole uh, real estate system, uh, as far as agents go, is set up down in Mexico. And so uh, why don't you, uh, uh, expand a little bit about what you that comment you made about the uh, the potential interest in Mexico as a result of were you meaning uh, this this settlement or uh, as a result of the prevailing market conditions with the high interest rates and and low inventory that uh, is going to be keeping buyers on the sideline uh, here. Uh, and and b before I let you speak, I'd, I'd like you to also touch on, if you wouldn't mind, uh, what uh, interest rates or financing looks like down in Mexico for the projects that are going to be sharing with us. Great question. Yeah, great setup. Thanks, Ted. Um, well, my phone has been ringing a lot more lately uh, since, well, today, actually, the interest rates in the United States were held at 5.50, which is good for the U.S. Hopefully that helps the housing market as well. But I've noticed that as the interest rates are rising in the U.S., uh, it's putting people's attention to another market. Um, now, Mexico is a majority cash-rich uh, society, so a lot of people do purchase cash and obviously expect like a discount. But yeah, there is some financing available. Um, but I think it's kind of the way you said it where in, in your joke earlier in the monologue that when people's dream of owning a house gets farther away, then they might as well start looking a little bit farther for that dream home. 
So hence, people have been starting to contact me here in Mexico saying, hey, look, if I get a 30-year mortgage, I'm going to be paying upwards around 8% uh, interest. What's down in Mexico that we can negotiate? And that's that's the biggest thing down here. Negotiation is part of the culture. And when somebody wants to make a purchase on something, if, if we can establish an agreement with the developer, if it's a new bill, then sometimes the developer will offer a period of financing as well. And, and a lot of times it's been like a 0% financing because we can put that into the promise agreement where developers promising to deliver a unit by this certain time and you're promising to pay this certain amount by this time and follow the pay table that's been structured so that uh, both parties are satisfied. Does that make sense? Sure, sure. It sounds like a, a, you know, a payment agreement is, as opposed to a financing agreement. I'm sure there are uh, penalties and caveats for, for not following through with your agreement, but you know, essentially that's the owner you know, getting the price and, and just agreeing to you know, not charge somebody interest as long as they pay uh, along that schedule. Is that uh, accurate way to say it? Right, right. Kind of like a note from the developer, exactly. Um, but a lot of developers have started to become a little bit more flexible to kind of open the market a little bit more as well. For example, I've got one development that uh, offers 36 months equal payments with 0% interest. So I've noticed a lot of people are starting to be like, wait a minute. 0% interest and I get 36 months or, you know, depending on what the person's financial capabilities are, we can present something that's flexible for that person making the purchase and offer it to the developer and see if they'll take it. Because as long as it's pre-construction, you've got a lot of flexibility when it comes to paying for it that way. Does that make sense? Definitely. I mean, that that's just uh, an example of how things are done a little bit differently down there than than here. And uh, have you heard anything um, from anybody down there about crypto lately since uh, the last time we spoke? Bitcoin has popped quite a bit. Yeah, actually, today was interesting because I was watching the markets. I noticed that everybody was kind of waiting and seeing what the FOMC's decision on the interest rates would be. But yeah, there's a lot of developers that are open to taking crypto as well. Uh, in fact, some of them offer discounts because of the crypto purchase. Um, and they've set themselves up to receive the payment in crypto as well. So if you've got crypto, it's a good open op opportunity here in Mexico that you can actually make yourself a good purchase on something that will obviously turn a profit, especially if you focus on areas that are um, uh, with lots of tourists coming down. For example, Puerto Vallarta, Ensenada, Oaxaca, Cancun, Playa del Carmen, Tulum, even Maha Wall is starting to get a lot of attention down there because property is not as expensive as in the United States, right? So it's a little bit different in that aspect. So I've had a lot of clients come in that are younger who say, you know, I've been considering buying a house in the U.S. I've been saving. I've got this down payment. The problem is that the, the prices for houses are a little bit high. And if I do finance, um, the interest rates are really high. So you got kind of two angles uh, because you got the people who possibly got a really good interest rate before the interest rates started rising. And those folks... They're not selling because if they do sell, they're kind of locking themselves out of the market, right? Because what are they going to do? Now they gotta, they're got they putting themselves in a bad situation, right? So people are starting to look over the fence down here in Mexico because you can actually generate a pretty good revenue when you're not using this property and use it as a vacation rental as well. And, of course, we, we go over the details of how to pay your taxes. Uh, the state of Quintana Roo actually – Last year, uh, instituted a new Airbnb tax. So I always recommend pay your taxes, hire an accountant. It's good to save your money, protect your money, but give the government what's theirs and avoid any troubles. That that sounds really great, um, and you know that that also sounds really great for for those agents like ourselves who um, are not only able to broadcast a podcast from their own personal metaverse space, but those of us who are able to do 
transactions in crypto. Uh, you know, I, I have this conversation with, with sellers all the time uh, that uh, a crypto buyer and, you know, the, a, a vast majority of the crypto buyers moving forward are going to be Gen X and millennials. Uh, there were more people born in 1992 than any other year. And so there's more 30, 31 year olds that are in the home buying range. Uh, and a, a, a percentage of those people have crypto. But, uh, you know, the, the, by being able to market to buyers and accept crypto as a form of payment, that opens up uh, their property to a whole new market of buyers that don't need to uh, to get traditional financing, that don't need to wait for any type of appraisal. Uh, and as a matter of fact, they don't really need to wait for much of anything at all because a transaction done on a smart contract really could uh, take as as little as minutes or hours. But you know, we we like to say it'll take a, you know a day or or two just to make sure that uh, the buyer goes through the proper KYC, which stands for know your client and other verifications to make sure the, the crypto isn't coming from a sanctioned country or the individual is not on any type of suspicious person person's list. Uh, so uh, by being able to accept crypto, uh, you make your property that much more accessible and easier for uh, people who may not be aware of it to, to buy it now. And uh, a lot of people might be thinking, well, I'm a seller and I don't want to accept crypto. And that's the beautiful part is that you don't have to because it can be converted to cash or whatever uh, currency you want it uh, converted to at closing in exactly the same way as if you're using a foreign currency and it was being converted to the local currency where you're at. So very exciting oh. stuff. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was just going to comment on that because, yeah, there's there's a concept that a lot of people aren't aware of called the landing exchange rate. Whenever you transfer money from the U.S. down here to Mexico, because obviously the peso has been doing really well because the country of Mexico has got a lot of foreign investment. This is actually, I don't know if you know, Ted, but this is the, the highest um, foreign investment. It's a record year in 20 years for Mexico. And uh, the number's over 30 billion foreign investments. So there's been a huge interest of people making purchases down here. So I can see how crypto, when you make a purchase, you're not dealing with, okay, I sent you X amount of crypto coins. Uh, what is it going to land at when uh, the exchanges are done and transferring to the banks and paying the fees? Because a lot of times uh, my clients from the U.S. are like, oh, so I'm short by hundred dollars because of the exchange rate um so yeah I, i've seen a lot of people say well could i just use crypto because you don't deal with the exchange rate right that that that's such a great point you you bring up and and part of the advantage of of where all these real estate transactions are going in doing things on blockchain is it cuts out a lot of the the middlemen and and parts of a real estate transaction that both add cost and slow things down. So I'm glad you glad you brought that up. It's a really great point to make it here on the show. Well, I'm glad it's it's something that I experience and uh, people pay me for my experience and they pay you for your experience. You know, like it's it's amazing how you mentioned that real estate agents is a handful that actually make a, a good decent amount of money. But those are the ones that dedicate themselves to knowing everything about the industry so that you're not paying for their time. You're paying for their experience and their knowledge. Do you agree, Ted? Yeah, you know, that, that, that too is a great point. You know, a lot, a lot of people are under the mi misconception that, you know, most real estate yeah. agents make a, a ton of money. But the, the fact of the matter is, like you pointed out, um, it, it has more to do with the value you bring than than necessarily the actions you take, although they're both related. Um, and, and I say that because, you know, as we're talking about these agents who who are at the top end and do make all that money, you know, you don't get to work with clients of that caliber and that range uh, right away. You just don't walk into the business and, and all of a sudden you're listing a multi-million dollar property. It takes, it takes the time and 
and putting in the work, like you said, to, to get to that point, to, to, have, to have and work with those clients. You know, the number of those clients is quite a bit smaller than the average buyer. And, and the, that's, that proportion is, is the same in the number of real estate agents that work in, in those levels versus the masses and the, the vast majority of buyers that, that, are, that do not participate in, in that level. Oh, 100%. And it's nice to have an agent that looks out for your best interest because buyer beware, we, yeah, that shouldn't exist anymore. The agent needs to really step up and help uh, the client. So that's, that's kind of why um, when you've got an agent that's worth their weight in gold, pick their brain, utilize their skills, rely on their experience. Um, keep that person's phone number. Recommend them. You know, send your friends to them. If they did a good job with you, recommend them. Well, and you know that's that's also a good good point about uh, trying to to do things on the cheap. And everybody wants to save money, but oftentimes, if if somebody picks the least expensive option, um, it ends up needing to be done again, uh, which ends up taking more time and could actually cost more money in, in, in case you have to have somebody else come in and do it because the first person didn't do a good job. So to me, it makes a little bit more sense to spend a little more the first time and make sure you're going to get what you want because ultimately it saves time and money in the long run anyway. 100%. And, and if it only takes, like, if it takes one extra time to measure before you make your cut, do three, three measurements. It's worth it. And uh, yeah, spending a little bit more to save more in the long run. I totally agree with that, Ted, because I've had clients who, who ask for discounts from lawyers. Um, obviously, when I recommend somebody to somebody, it's, a, it's an impression, uh, like a first impression that the client feels that I tell them, hey, go with your instinct. If you didn't like this lawyer, hey, don't worry, we can find you another one as well or find another property. Like, there's so many options, but at the same time, if you've got a good agent that you can rely on and trust, um, especially somebody who's hip, <laughs> notice the uh, the old pun there with the old term there. If they're hip to what's going on in the crypto world, rely on their knowledge and pick their brain. Because a lot of people, it's with crypto, you have to be self-motivated to learn about these things these days because you don't just wake up one day and be like, okay, $1 equals X number of Bitcoin, right? Because nowadays, the world's changing where before when you wanted to buy a share of a stock let's say Amazon for example you had to buy a full share nowadays we got social media traders that it's opened the market up to more investors so you can actually buy what's called fractional ownership of like a stock so like it's interesting how the world is changing in that aspect where it's a lot of the same but just a little bit different Do you, does that make sense Ted yeah, you know, and uh, I, I, I want to um, build on a couple of those things that you just said, uh, and one of which, and, and this is more of kind of a, a disclosure about what we're doing here, and that is we're not about trading crypto here. You know, so if you're looking for crypto advice or this crypto or that crypto, you're not going to find it here. Uh, we, we look at crypto as a currency to, to pay for properties on the new way that transactions are going to be conducted. Uh, but that said, it is important to have an idea of what some of them are about. Um, and, and so this is going to, um, you know, be part of the, the blockchain technology, which is actually what we are here to discuss, uh, how the transactions will be done on smart contract, electronically and as we've said cut out a lot of the the extra cost and fat that uh, has been in there before um so uh that was one of the things i wanted to to mention and i also want to ask uh you if uh what kind of property you might have brought to talk with us about today well um i've got lots of options um Love to send you some stuff that we could put up on the screen as well, but we've got some great properties in Cozumel. 
for example, uh, luxury gardens, the Laurel Luxury Gardens. It'd be right on the beach. You got a great amount of amenities. You got ocean view. Um, the nice thing where this is located, it's up on the northwest side of Cozumel. So we all know that sometimes every year uh, this area gets a little seaweed or sargasm. Um, the same in Florida. You know, the red tide comes in once in a while. But on that side of the island, you never have to deal with it with that. So that's that's one of my clients. As soon as she saw that, she jumped on it and making the purchase in U.S. dollars. So I like the way that you said that, Ted. We we refer to crypto as just a, another form of currency. You want to use U.S. dollars. You want to use Canadian. You want to use Bitcoin. They're all currencies, right? And uh, no, nobody's ever going to get an Instagram message from me trying to get you <laughs> on. Forex or anything like that. You know, um, while, while we're talking about that, I, I also want to throw another disclaimer out there, <coughs> you know, for security purpose. That is, um, I, I'm sure everybody is aware that uh, people impersonate other people on on social uh, and, and online. And so I just want to be clear with everybody that um, I only have my one main social accounts on all the platforms and that I will never reach out to anybody directly for any type of crypto investment scheme or to borrow any money or or any part of that. And so I just want to throw that out there and make that clear because, you know, when people start seeing the stuff we're going to be talking about, they're going to want to, you know, perpetrate whatever nefarious stuff that they're into. And so I just want people to be aware and prepared uh, to that end i've also got an ebook that i wrote which will will also include a link to in the comments section that uh basically uh i, I wrote for people to give their parents on, on how to protect themselves online from the stuff that we're talking about and how to operate as safely as can be so that link will be um in in the comment section as well this is all part of uh, what we're trying to bring here is is value and and leave uh, and and give somebody to take something of value with them when they leave these shows. Um, ultimately, we'll have other uh, participation um, uh, and and comments as we expand the topics that we're talking about. But uh, with respect to those um, the property that you just mentioned, Jesse. Uh, and we'll be putting uh, some of the visuals on the screen behind you and in the comments section. But why don't you give us an idea of, uh, you know, what price range and and things uh, go along with the property you just mentioned? Great question. Yeah, and I was going to mention something about uh, we live in a different age these days when um, cybersecurity is kind of a normal thing these days. So you should always be alert of threat detections. And one way, uh, if you do use Instagram, uh, if you want to know how to spot a fake account, usually you can take a look at the pictures. And if you zoom in, they're all blurry. They're just not perfectly visible like a regular picture is. So usually that indicates that this is a fake account. Because <coughs> a person that's uploading their own pictures, it's not blurry because you're using your phone in high def. So something to be aware of. But let me... Yeah, uh, yeah. <coughs> Go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to let you take over there for a sec while I dig up a little bit of information. Sure, sure. Yeah, you know, I was going to say, we'll we'll have another show about that particular topic by itself because, um, you know, it, once you learn how to spot the fakes, uh, and, and I do this, I, I do it at least a dozen times a day, report a fake account as a scam or fraud, and you, you can easily tell if, especially on TikTok, for example, if somebody has um, uh, a, a bunch of all the posts all uploaded on the same day. You know, any of us that make content aren't going to post 25 or 50 posts uh, on the same day. It just, it's, you know, it, it just doesn't make sense. Um, and, and then you can get into the spelling of the, the handles and, and stuff like that. But uh, as I said, that's a whole nother show. And um, uh, as soon as you, uh, as soon as we're done talking about your property, I'll, I'll fill everybody in on uh, the awesome company that I work for, Real Broker, and 
some of the industry leading technology that they're rolling out for us. I'm super excited about uh, what's coming. Nice, yeah. Stay vigilant, that's the best way, you know, keep learning uh, so you can spot those uh, threat detections. Well, you know, it's all, all of this stuff that we're talking about is, is uh, a demonstration of our understanding uh, of what, what's important to be able to bring the value to customers that agents who just don't put in the effort or bring what we're bringing here, um, they, they, can't, they won't be able to compete, especially with some of the stuff that we just talked about, the new um, NAR first domino to fall, and, uh, and even the, the current market conditions here. Um, I was doing some calculations for an investor of mine because uh, he's ready to buy another condo, and um, the, the interest rate that I looked up yesterday was 8.6%. And um, compared to the last time we bought eight months ago or something like that, when it was in the fours, um, uh, that plus uh, the, the higher price, which is in part due to low inventory, the, the whole landscape of uh, being able to buy an investment property at this point has changed. It's, you know, uh, the, from having to go putting some, somewhere around, say, a, Thirty to forty thousand dollar down payment uh, on a condo as an investor to, to be able to cover the mortgage payment, the HOA, the property management fees. Now it's over a hundred thousand dollars for the exact same situation, and so it's just a, a, a head shaker because you know, you know it, at least in my opinion, for the next six months um, until you know, the, the pre-election season uh, interest rate reductions come come in, which pretty much happens every time there's an election, interest rates go down going into the election. Between now and then, um, you know, buyers are going to have it really tough. Uh, sellers are going to be reluctant to sell, uh, especially if they're a move-up seller. Uh, but that's not to say people are not still buying and selling real estate. As a matter of fact, here in Las Vegas, uh, uh, an option, another option to buying uh, a resale or, or previously owned home is buying new construction. And um, I'll also put a link in the comments section in case anybody's looking for new construction here in Las Vegas or in South Florida where I'm also licensed. But, but uh, here in Las Vegas, up until recently, uh, the percentage of new construction homes uh, as, a, as a function of the whole was anywhere between 10 and 15 uh, percent. And that had a lot to do with the fact that new homes are more expensive and, and a, a few other things. But at the moment, because uh, uh, builders and developers now understand the market dynamics and have made a lot of money uh, up until, you know, before the um, interest rates have gone up, uh, the, these new sellers, the, the new construction are able to offer incentives and interest rate buy downs, uh, three to one buy down, two one buy down. And what that means is that the introductory rate, the first year of the mortgage payment, uh, the first year uh, will have a uh, lower interest rate than the note rate. So in, in the example of a 3-1 three, three buy down uh, and 8.5%, and the, the first year mortgage uh, interest rate, rate would be 5.5%, second year 65 and the third 75 and then it would just be the, the note rate after that. And what that does is that allows people to qualify at a lower payment. Now, uh, I hear all kinds of objections lately about the prices being high and the interest rates being high, but uh, you can always refinance when interest rates go down. And I just uh, explained when that's likely to happen. But but also consider this: uh, with so many people sitting on the sidelines right now, for the reasons I just mentioned, when interest rates go down, what what's that going to do? That's going to cause everybody who's sitting there on the fence right now to jump back in. And, you know, if, 
if history tells us anything, when that happens, that's going to push prices back up because the demand will be there, uh, even though the supply is not. And so um, that this, these are all the things I'm telling my clients, buyers and sellers lately about uh, market dynamics and what's going on here in, uh, in the market. Incredible. That's valuable knowledge that a lot of people need to consider. Ted, well done. You want me to Thanks, tell you, you know, a little bit more about? Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Well, uh, before you jump in, I just want to point out that uh, whatever the statistic is, I've heard it some somewhere around half of the real estate agents here in the country have been in the business for less than five years. Um, a vast majority of them would have no idea, uh, not only what a market cycle is like, but to, uh, about how to have a conversation like that about some of the the options, the the buy down options, or even an adjustable rate mortgage, you know, s some way to make it easier for them to buy the house. So I uh, just wanted to point that out uh, as uh, an experienced agent of over 25 years and two market cycles. And so why don't you tell us a little bit about what you were going to say? Thanks, Ted. Appreciate that. Well, just to make sure everybody knows who I am, I am Jesse, and they call me Jesse Canuck because I'm a good Canadian kid. And I work for Brick Luxury and Living. I'm a real estate agent down here in Cancun and basically the state of Quintana Roo. But I have had the pleasure of being able to be involved in a, in a lot of deals that are in different parts of Mexico. So what I would like to share with you today is the, about the, the island of Cozumel. So have you heard of Cozumel before, Ted? I have. Wonderful. A lot of people have because this part of Mexico is very famous. Uh, it's known as the second best, uh, well, the second biggest coral reef in the world next to uh, the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. There's also the world famous white tropical beaches. And I got to tell you, like, when you stand on the sand, I don't know if you've experienced being on the beach and burning your feet because the sand is hot. This sand down here, the white tropical beaches, do not burn your feet. It's amazing. You can stand there. It's incredible. It, it, it blows me away every time how hot it is, but the sand doesn't burn my feet. It's a top scuba diving destination. It's beautiful because it's peaceful and green, and it's got a great environment. Mexico is very protective of their environment as well. Uh, it's a modern in island infrastructure as well. They've got all the plumbing. Like it's it's amazing how in just the last ten years, Mexico's really put a lot of money into the infrastructure, making sure that things are running smoothly. Like one of the biggest questions a lot of my clients, and this might even lead into a conversation about crypto again, but a lot of my clients, what's important to them is high speed internet. So a lot of them have those kinds of things. Um, there's top healthcare specialists and high quality equipment. When it comes to healthcare in Mexico, yes, you've got private, yes, you've got social. Cost is comparatively different from the United States of America. So there's a lot of people that come down here for medical tourism as well. Hey, why not get, you know, your teeth fixed, rest for a week, go back, have a beautiful smile. Your friends will notice and they'll be like, what did you do? Went to Mexico. Um, it's one of the safest cities in Mexico as well. And it's also named the Island of Peace on 2012. So it's, it's, it's also been upgraded to what's called a magic. Uh, that's, that's like a term here in Mexico, like a magic city. So that's where they get this title. And it's pretty cool actually, because obviously they get more attention on making sure that the environment's safe and it's beautiful. Um, this development in particular, has 15 unique condoms, or sorry, <laughs> pardon me, <laughs> 15, I was, 15, so I was 15, gonna say 15, condominiums, but then I was gonna say condos. <laughs> 15 different sizes of condoms, is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> pardon me, yeah, let's try that again. Uh, <laughs> this development has 15 unique designed condominiums, <laughs> And don't even get me to try to say a lot of the names because uh, they're all uh, like Mayan design. So like there's, uh, for example, like Palmares, that's an easy one for me to say, and Coaba and Caen and Hardin. Um, so if you want to see more, um, they're going to be on the screen behind me. Don't worry. 
Um, this is actually in Mexico. This area is called what's called a privileged location because you can find yourself only under 10 minute walk away from the Caribbean Sea. Um, there is a limit to how much is available and this place has been selling already. So it's amazing how um, people's interest in pre-construction is at an all time high right now because the best price you can get is before construction starts. And this particular design boasts a very luxury design because it's one of the top of the line and it is the only option that has everything that's luxury this, this way. It's also built with a sustainable environment. So your home at the luxury gardens is full of green energy, which is an important part because you got a lot of solar panels, but they built it in so you're not going to be looking at an ugly solar panel while you're sitting at the pool. Uh, because you also got some vast gardens and green areas in every direction from the homes. You're not going to be looking and seeing, oh, there's a building. No, you're you're built into the jungle. So you're actually existing somewhere where it doesn't feel like you're in an urban jungle. Uh, you've got the nature at home. So it, they built it. Green is important in this development. Um, the other thing that I can share with you is you're effortlessly away from the Caribbean Sea. Like, less than 10 minute walk you can stroll down there every day um, this area Quintana Roo is actually known for having the most amount of sunlight in, in the world so it's pretty amazing I think the last time I looked at the stat there's 365 days I've heard there's a, a rumored 366 days somewhere but out of those there's at least 220 days that are sunshine which I don't know if you get clients that uh, they always mention, hey, light's important to me. I agree. We all want to avoid those sad situations, the seasonally affected disorders, right? Uh, and fresh. Fresh is the most important thing because with green being built, you can have a lot of shaded areas so that the cool temperature can be enjoyable by the pool. There's uh, some of the facilities, let me lead into the pool. You've got security systems. So you've got cameras everywhere. You don't have to worry about security. You've got 24 hour security guards that are working at the front gate. So people don't just walk into the things. People have to register at the front lobby if you've got a guest or you have to be a friend of the owner or a guest of the owner or, or the owner itself. There's grill areas. There's 35% of this development is designated green space. You got your sun deck, there's private parking, you got your gyms, uh, private park style sidewalks as well. And what's the most important thing? Well, for some people, it's being pet friendly as well because not everybody wants to leave their pet at home. So, for example, to give you an idea, one of the biggest uh, units in this development is uh, 176.35 square meters now to translate that for our american friends that is just under 1900 square feet the exact number is 1898.2156 now that's 19, just 1900 the, uh, the interior space you say again i, I was saying 1900 is close enough yeah cool well you, you know me i like to do everything i i I cross my T's and dot my lowercase J's just to make sure clients know that, oh, there's no surprises. <laughs> so that's my fault for being a bit of a perfectionist. Well, no, I mean, that that is a very underrated um, topic is dotting the lowercase J's. A lot of people don't take that seriously. It's details, right? Especially when ultimately it's the client satisfaction and the happiness that, you know, makes it like, yeah, we get a paycheck, Ted. But at the same time, at the end of the day, having another client that's happy usually leads to more business because you did a good job. And if they're happy, they're going to talk about it. Now, well, I am really excited about being able to put some of the information about that property that you just talked about in the comments section and uh, see uh, who in the audience might be interested in uh, investigating it more. I'd, I'd be willing to yeah. bet that uh, somebody's going to want to want to find out some more information. I don't doubt it. Um, also, just to let you know, this 
This is a, a like a an apartment condominium slash like house. So it's like a little bit of a house complex. So you've got your house space. You've got some green space designated as your lot as well. So there's 62.23 square meters that's designated green space just for your property. And, and that is in square footage, just under 670 square feet. So I'll, I'll leave it at that for you, Ted. <laughs> And All right. Then, uh, and, uh, you got four bedrooms in this beautiful development. Go ahead. Uh, uh, and and is this uh, property uh, able to be used as an Airbnb or just a primary? Well, here's the nice thing. In Mexico, there's no rules like there is in New York about Airbnb. As long as you pay the state Airbnb tax, you are welcome to hire a property manager to take care of it for you in the time that you're not here because that's a pretty popular thing people come down you're allowed to visit with your tourist visa six months out of the year so if you're a snowbird like a lot of my clients you'll come down here just to avoid winter and then you go back for your summers for you know fourth of july the best times to have barbecues and beers right to tell you a little yep. bit more about this, uh, this one unit. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Ted. I think there's a little no, bit no, of delay. I, I, I was just going to mention, you, you said barbecues and beers, and I, I was going to say, or margaritas, since we're talking about Mexico. Oh, good point. Yeah. <laughs> oh, actually, since you mentioned margarita, I always warn my clients about the margarita burn. So be careful about lime juice, because a lot of people bite the lime for tequila and forget that lime juice reacts to the sun so I, I've, I've seen some people that don't know why they've got a mark around their lips <laughs> <laughs> now see you learn something new and funny every day lime burn uh and you're i mean i don't i mean I, i'm not a training wheels person myself anyway but uh, that's that's pretty uh, fun fact yeah just in case you ever end up on jeopardy and they say what is a margarita burn <laughs> <laughs> so you, you got a second and a third floor in this uh this unit four bedrooms three and a half bath you got a parking space and you got your roof garden as well which i mentioned was 62.23 which is just under 700 square feet so i hope you enjoy it it's uh the beautiful development it's designed to feel like you're at home in the jungle so it, it's amazing I'm happy to well, share this with you. For for sure, we'll we'll uh, take a trip over there next time I'm down there, which will will be sometime this winter because uh, the weather just turned here in Vegas, if that's what you want to call it, uh, and it's not like winter in New York or the top half of the country. But it it, uh, it did get down into the 40s, um, and that's where it is at night right now. So pretty beautiful during the day, but you're definitely it's jacket weather at night for sure. Um, wow. So I, want, I wanted well, to, may, I wanted to add, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, if I may add, um, we're actually experiencing a bit of a cold front here from the U.S. because of the winds that are coming down to the Yucatan Peninsula. So it's kind of nice that it blew away some of the humidity, but, um, well, okay, imagine this. If you, uh, it's 27 degrees Celsius, so I think uh, add 45, so you're looking at about just under 70, somewhere around 68 maybe. But uh, just imagine getting a big hug from humidity. Well, right now it's not here, so cool. come on down anytime you want, Ted. It's going to happen pretty soon. I was going to ask you. I was going to. Uh, I, I was going to say, um, knock knock. Who's there, Ted? Atch. Atch you. Bless you. Uh, and so let's let's move on <laughs> to. Uh, let's move on to the uh, to the next uh, thing that I would like to talk about, unless uh, you have any more to add about that particular property. No, let's leave it at that, Ted, because I, I know that uh, we're running a little bit low on time, so let's let's bring it to a close. Uh, no, actually, um, I, I wanted to mention I wanted to talk a little bit about my recent trip to San Diego. Uh, for the real broke, oh, the real yeah. rise. Um, it, essentially, it's a, a convention, and um, uh, I'm not sure how many people uh, are familiar with Real Broker. The company's been around for uh, a few years now, and um, it, it's actually 
probably the fastest growing publicly traded real estate company just having eclipsed 12,000 agents nationwide. Uh, and it's very tech and agent centric uh, and, and has a much better um, compensation uh, program pretty much than any other uh, company as it, it's the culmination of of what all brokerages have have led up to. In other words, um, this this brokerage um, not only has a lower cap and a better split um, than some of the competitors, uh, but they, they rolled out some pretty amazing uh, new features um, at this convention. And I just want to touch on those real quickly. Um, I'm sure I'll have another show about them, but. Um, it, it, and and a lot of these things um, are are for the agent, but a lot of things are for the consumer too. Um, Real Broker has its own mortgage company, has its own title company, and um, we've also got a consumer app, which makes that whole part of the process uh, easy and streamlined. Uh, Real Broker has a, a, a similar ecosystem to the other company I'm going to talk about in a minute, Proppy. Uh, where everything is basically in one streamlined platform. You don't have to go to any other company or any other um, entity to get the information or any parts of the, the transaction done, whether it's uh, recording uh, the, the, the transaction in, at title or the financing aspect of it. And so this consumer, uh, this consumer app, it's called One Real is is a real advancement on the consumer side now on the agent side they've recently rolled out um, a uh, a wealth calculator which uh, will basically forecast uh how how much you can be making towards your retirement based on filling in a lot of uh, que uh questions about the the number of transactions and how much you want to require uh, how much you want to end up with um, and, and there's also uh, stock incentives, there's incentives to bring new agents in and, and a lot of other things like that. But I also want to talk about, um, sorry, the, uh, uh, I mean, so many things that, uh, that they rolled out. They just rolled out a really awesome listing presentation for us, which is really um, been uh, developed over time from uh, what has ha what has worked from from some of the really successful agents, and so um, it's going to make it a lot easier for us real agents to have a uh, a uh, a presentation that is I don't want to say uniform, but it's consistent, and people will begin to know what to expect from a real broker agent. Um, and so um, these are a few things that I wanted to, to speak about um, uh, uh, with respect to, uh, to Real Broker. And if anybody has any questions uh, about it or, or wants to know about joining, uh, feel free to reach out and I'll put a link in the description as well. Um, we've also recently uh, put together a, a Real Military Division, uh, the, the CEO. Uh, from Israel, uh, served in the military, as did his father. Um, and a lot of real agents have uh, military service or are current military. And so we want to make sure and give back to the, those who give so much for our country. Um, and so um, as far as uh, this stuff goes, I wanted to mention some of these things. and. Um, and then uh, I, I also want to mention, since uh, I, I, oh, one other big thing that they just rolled out, which is really amazing, is health insurance. Huge for real estate agents, and uh, that has been, uh, has come about recently and is really um, built in. And on top of all of that, there's something that they put together called a wallet, and that ties everything that we that I just talked about together and you can see uh, what contributions are where you can see uh, what transactions you're working on they've even built uh, an AI 
called Leo, which um, is, is totally responsive. And all you have to do is, uh, as an agent, is log into the, the Reason app and ask Leo uh, how to start a transaction, what else you need to do on this transaction, when you're getting paid, any number of, any, any real estate question you can think of, uh, there's an AI built in for that specific purpose. But the, the wallet, the whole concept of tying everything together with technology uh, is designed not only to make it um, convenient uh, for the consumer, but to streamline everything for real estate agents who are notoriously not so good at keeping records or, uh, or doing a lot of administrative type functions. Everything is there in the palm of your hand in an app. In, in much the similar way as um, an app that I'm rolling out to, I'm announcing that's in the App Store uh, for high rises in Las Vegas. It's called the Las Vegas High Rise app. And it's, uh, it's designed in a similar concept to make the entire process of, of buying a Las Vegas high rise easy and can be done from an app on your phone in your pocket. Within a few taps, you can actually get to uh, a listing that might be on the market, and when you find one you like, you can hit the make an offer button, a screen will open up, you fill everything out, and of course, all that stuff's going to have to be verified and KYC like we talked about earlier, but talk about streamlining the, the whole buying process, same thing with uh, the sell side, a few taps, and the listing can be populated, and we'll talk about the Las Vegas High Rise app uh, much more on another show but just wanted to give it a plug because uh, for the very same reason that we are sitting here having a podcast in uh, a, a metaverse space, the first real estate agent to have a space like this and to do a podcast from a space like this, technology is the future and, um, uh, and uh, agents uh, of um, Agents are just going to have to get on board with technology or they're they're going to be obsolete uh, as they won't be bringing the value that the ones that save everybody time and money uh, are. And while I'm mentioning um, the technology aspect, I also want to talk about the other company that I work with um, that is actually having an AI and Web3 um, uh, a symposium in Miami Beach. Uh, uh, AI and Web3 Summit, uh, just like they have for the last couple of years, and that company is called Proppy. I've I've mentioned Proppy uh, a bunch in the past, and I will a bunch in the future, because this company is the uh, is the one that has been able to uh, be the first at selling property in the United States via NFT. And another way of saying that is on a smart contract using crypto to buy it. So um, anyway, the, the, the Web3 Summit is in Miami on November 3rd for any agents that might be interested or down there and want to come by. Um, I'll have uh, info on that in the comment section too. Holy cow, the comment section is going to be chock full of all kinds of uh, what I would say valuable information for those who have tuned in and want to come along for this ride that we happen to be on broadcasting live from the Tediverse studio in the Tediverse. So uh, with all of that said, um, I think I've pretty much gotten everything uh, out that I, I wanted to. And uh, do you have anything else you want to mention, Jesse? Or are we going to circle back next week and have another scintillating conversation about Mexico real estate? Um, real estate in the United States, um, cryptocurrency used as a medium to to buy real estate on blockchain, and all kinds of other things. Well, Ted, you know that you and I we could we could talk endlessly subjects uh, because obviously we found our passion, and uh, we when you find something you love to do, the money comes with it as well. So. Um, we started with a joke. Would you like me to end with a joke or toss a joke that you can uh, add? I, w I would say fire away. All right. How many real estate agents does it take to
to make a deal. That's a really good one. I don't know, Jesse, how many real estate agents does it take to make? Let's say 100, because you need one to make the deal and 99 to tell you how they would do it different. <laughs> we'll have a laugh track in there too, but uh, well, uh, on that note, um, <laughs> thanks very much uh, for, for doing this with me again, Jesse. And uh, we both look forward to seeing uh, whoever it is that joins us next time around. Thanks very much for stopping in awesome. today in the Tediverse. Thanks, Ted. Thanks, guys. Stay safe out there, guys.